Bibles this morning. Turn with me again to the book of John. John chapter 19. Two verses of scripture I'll read for you this morning. John 19, 28 and 29. And after this, Jesus, knowing all things are now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. Almighty God, how thankful and grateful we are for this opportunity to be in your house this morning. And I pray that we've come for no other purpose but to just simply worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord God, in these next few moments, help us to get our eyes up off the things of this whole earth and look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Father, my prayer this morning, if there's one here who has never accepted you as a personal Savior, that today they would open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. I also pray too for each and every member and for each and every one that's here this morning, that we might truly be in your will, doing what you'd have us to do. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We've been looking at the last words of the Lord Jesus Christ from the cross. First of all, there was a forgiving word. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. <clears throat> now, you know, isn't that wonderful? God forgives you. He forgives me. We don't know what we're doing sometimes. Then, of course, there was the assuring word when he said to the uh, repentant thief, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Not next week, not next month, not next year, but today mm -hmm. you'll be with me in paradise. Then there was a caring word. The third word, of course, is a caring word, and there he said, Son, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. And then last week we looked at the despairing word of the Lord Jesus Christ, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, all the sins were placed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Father who cannot look upon sin had to turn his back. And darkness came upon this old earth. Anytime you turn away from the Lord God, I tell you, darkness comes. You know what? <clears throat> but now... Now the sun's shining again, and Jesus cries out, I thirst. A soldier dips a sponge in the vinegar and presses it to his mouth. Jesus now is back again, and he's suffering as a human being. Several words here I must look at this morning. First of all, there's a word of need. The Lord Jesus Christ he is suffering. He's in I thirst. He wanted something to drink. It's been said, by the way, I don't know how true it is, I guess it is, that crucifixion is the most painful mode of torture ever devised by mankind. You see, the draining away of the blood brings extensive hunger or thirst to an individual. Now, I don't know, I've been hungry a few times, I've been thirsty a few times, but nothing compares to what the Lord Jesus Christ had to go through upon the cross. He said, I thirst. Well, there's no, no reason why he was there. You know, he'd been up all night, carrying the cross, hung in the sun, darkness. Oh, how he suffered. But think, not only that, but think of the emotional anguish that he went through. All the spiritual burdens of sin was placed upon him. He suffered and cried, I thirst. By the way, listen to me. Those of you who have never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll suffer too if you refuse the Lord Jesus. You'll be thirsty. You remember in a place called hell, the rich man wanted just a tip of, 
uh, just a little drop of water on his tongue. He was so thirsty. That's what hell's all about, my friend. So take note of that. Second, there's a word of fulfillment. Notice he says that the scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus knew the word of God. Oh, and he used it many, many times to bless his own life. You remember on the Mount of Temptation, he defeated Satan by using the word of God. Well, that's how we defeat Satan. That's how we defeat Satan today, by using the word of God. <laughs> A lot of people don't even know the word of God. You'd be surprised that the people don't even know, you know, John 3, 16. How are you going to defeat that? How are you going to defeat Satan if you don't know the word of God? I, I, this young fellow sitting up front here, he's got his Bible open. That's the thing to do. Study the word of God. Know the word of God. And you can defeat Satan. Now, he said, I thirst is in fulfillment of the scripture. So all you have to do is turn back to Psalm 69. And there Jesus says, in my thirst, mm -hmm. in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Mm -hmm. And here we find that Jesus says it. Mm -hmm. It's fulfilled. All of that. Now, here we're on the cross. We see the two sides of Christ's nature, really. His divine nature had promised uh, to the repentant thief heaven, glory, all of that. On the, sh on the human side now, he says, I suffer. I thirst. Great agony. I, you know, it must be a terrible thing. Just think about crucifixion. I don't know. It's got to be a terrible, terrible thing. But this shows his humanity. You know, something God doesn't thirst. Angels don't thirst. And in the book of Revelation, we've been studying the book of Revelation on Sunday night, you remember in chapter 7, it says that you and I, praise God, there'll be a time when we'll hunger and thirst no more. Amen. Won't that be wonderful? Oh, praise the Lord. You know, When you think about this, you have to think also of Jesus when he came to Jacob's well in Samaria. And there he told the Samaritan woman that he was living water. And whoever partook of that living water would never thirst again. You know what? John wanted us to understand that Jesus was both divine and that he was human. He is all God and he's all man. I know that's hard for some people to understand, but absolutely true. It was God who took upon himself humanity and suffered and died so he could pay for your sins and pay for my sin. And there he cried out, I thirst, I thirst. There's also here a word of sacrifice. John wanted us to understand that Jesus was God's sacrifice. You remember when Isaac would and Abraham was going up to Mount Moriah. Young Isaac said, listen, we got wood and we got fire. But where's the sacrifice? Remember what Abraham said? The Lord will provide his sacrifice. Oh, my friends, God provides a sacrifice for this world to take away the sins of the world. He provided the sacrifice for you and for me. If you're a child of God this morning, you need to realize that you are a child of God and you're in the family of God because the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross and he died on that cross Amen. for you. Thank you. If you've never accepted him, I want you to understand this morning that he did it for you also. <laughs> he died that you might have eternal, everlasting life. He died for you and me. Now I'm not going to attempt this morning to go into all the details to describe the agony of the cross. You can read that. You know that. Uh, but I just say, let me just say he suffered and sacrificed so that I might be a child of God. I, all I can say this morning is thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. 
Now, Jesus died on Calvary's cross. He died for you. He died for me. And on that cross, He said, I thirst. I'm thirsty. But you know, there's something else here. He doesn't think of Himself until He takes care of everybody else. <laughs> you know what? He had taken care of the needs of the others, taken care of those who had crucified him, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He had taken care of the repentant sinner and told him he'd be with him in, in glory that very day. Even made, he even made preparation for his mother. <clears throat> yes. But now, now, he is dying and sacrificing himself. Listen, let me say to you this morning, we need no other sacrifice. It was all paid for on Calvary's cross. Don't you let some of these long-winded preachers, <clears throat> or short-winded preachers, whatever kind of preachers, tell you that they, there's something else has to be done. I say to you this morning when Jesus died on Calvary's cross, He paid the price. And you don't have to do anything yet. Amen. There's no other sacrifice that's needed. That's right. You know, Jesus still thirsts, though. He thirsts for you, for me. He thirsts uh, that we might really, truly do His will, what He wants us to do. Man, for instance, man today, he thirsts for all kinds of things. He thirsts for wealth, power, prestige. Jesus said to the woman at the well, those who thirst for this will, will thirst again. You, you know, you... For you guys out there who are trying to get rich, listen, get all the money you can. Get all the power you can get. Get all the prestige you can get a hold of. Huh? It'll only last for a while. And the zest will soon be gone. And you will thirst again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't believe that? <coughs> Let me tell you about a man that's found in the Bible. His name is Solomon. You remember Solomon? Why, well, he was the richest man in the in all of Jerusalem and perhaps in the world at that time, I don't know. He had more knowledge than anyone else. <laughs> See, he got it. He had, by the way, he had more wives than anyone else. Did. <laughs> See, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's more, that's an you know something else, David? He had his own choir. <laughs> But listen, listen to him in the little book of Ecclesiastes. He's crying out, I thirst. I thirst for something more. All is vanity. All of it is vanity and vexation of spirit. See, all that stuff won't do you any good. Everybody wants all of that. That won't help you. You know why? Because the thirst of the soul is spiritual. And the only one I know of that's, that can take care of that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one. He can satisfy your soul. And by the way, let me just say this again to you. Jesus still thirsts today. He thirsts for those who <coughs> need to come and serve Him, work for Him, because the fields are white under harvest. And the workers are few. Isn't that sad? You remember again, going back to Jacob's well. You remember when Jesus came to Jacob's well? He was hungry. He was thirsty. But you know what the most important thing for him was? The saving of that woman who came to draw water that day at the well. That was what was important to him. And by the way, that's what should be important to every child of God. 
listen, I don't know this morning, if you're lost, make up your heart to, to serve Him or to give your heart to Him. He died for you. He suffered for you. He was thirsty. His thirst was real. Don't, don't wander around out there in the wilderness somewhere. Let some group or somebody try to talk you out of coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just give your heart to Him. Do it. Because, listen, Jesus paid the price. You don't, you don't need any other sacrifice. Jesus paid it all. Boy, don't you love that song? He paid it all. All to Him I owe. Like he is left to crimson. Sin is left to crimson stain. He's washed it white as snow. He died that you might live. <laughs> if you've never experienced the new birth, do so today. Do not turn him away. He did it all for you. <coughs> did it all for me. You know, all I can say this morning is praise God. Praise God. I don't understand, I, I really, well, I do understand some of it, but not all of it. That's the exact reason why Jesus had to come to this old earth to die on a cross to save an old sinner like me. I don't understand it all, but I know that he did, and all I can say is praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord God. He did it, and he did it for me. So this morning, dear friends, listen to me. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Think for a few moments about the cross. You know, when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, He didn't say, remember the don't remember my birth. Boy, you know, we remember His birth. Christmas is a great time. I remember that. Jesus said, no, you remember my death. You remember my death upon Calvary's cross. That's what he wants us to remember. I think I've said this sometime before, but I'm going to say it again. You'll forgive me, won't you? Sometimes the old Negro spiritual said it all. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Oh, God, thank you. Father, I thank you so much. Praise your holy name. Going to the cross, paying the price for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.